Okay, so now that we've got two sets of lines, we've got uh, a consistent line in the x direction and then a variable line that's coming out depending on the orientation of the panel. What we can do is we can take a measurement between those on a case-by-case -case basis. And we'll do that by going to vector angle and feeding each set of lines in. And what that's going to do is it's going to output uh, a number of locally defined values. And what we can do is, so you'll notice um, that here it's just giving us a set of numbers um, in no discernible order. Each of these is related to a panel, and you can start to understand which panel those are related to by going to the parameters menu and clicking on a panel or a post-it. And what this will do is when we feed that in, it will show us, gives us a number for each panel, and then it gives us a readout. And in this case, that, that number that we're seeing is the angle and radians. And so it still doesn't really explain, you know, which is panel 8. So if we want to understand that, well, one way to do that, because it's referring to uh, this subdivided surface, we'll turn that on, is that we can itemize it by going to the logic command, logic menu, and going to the list menu, and say list item. So this is a kind of analytical tool where what we'll do is we'll feed the subdivided surface into that. And now we need to tell it which item we want. And there's a total number of 76 surfaces. So let's just make a slider bar that has a range that goes up to from 0 to 76. So the first panel is always going to be panel 0. We'll feed that in. So right now what you can see is that when I select item, this panel lights up. And that panel is panel number 6. So as I slide this, it's actually going to tell me which panel is which. So if I need to know which is panel 40, or 41, or 42, or 43. I can do it that way. So then, that way you can get a correlation between the angle that's coming up on the post-it and the panel that you're seeing on the screen. So that's one handy analytical tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to take all these numbers and we're going to feed those in to the height of the surface box. Um, so I'm going to turn off the subdivided surface. I'll actually turn off the item. And up till now, so I'm going to turn on the, sub the surface box. Up till now, the way that we've been doing this is that we've been feeding in one kind of steady number for all of the surfaces, all the surface subdivisions, and so they uniformly either expand or contract. And what this is going to do is it's going to give a number on a per panel basis. So for all 76 panels, it's going to give that unique number to that panel. So to do that, what I'm going to do is disconnect the slider, and then instead feed all of this information in. And you can't see it very well yet. You can see it's a little thicker here and a little thinner there. So what I'll do is I'll disconnect that and then I'll multiply it by going to scalar 8 times b, um, feed this in as a, and then for b, let's use another slider bar and now feed that in. So now you can see more clearly a deeper surface box in one orientation and a much shallower one in another. I'm going to turn off the preview for the lines. And so we're moving towards a much more differentiated facade where 
The facade thickens in certain orientations and it thins out in others, depending on, say, solar exposure or views or some other kind of criteria that you're letting determine the, the facade. And then to um, complete this step, what we'll do is uh, map some kind of object into that surface box using the box morph command. So I've got something uh, handy, which is um, this panel that I created, which has not just the shading device, but it's also got the what you might call the glass panel or the facade panel. So it's got something that's going to be flat and then something that's going to be expressed outward from the facade. And we'll be able to control uh, the depth of this shading device, but this panel here is always going to stay consistent. Um, so I had input that as my geometry, uh, and then I created a bounding box for that, and then I fed that into the box morph command, similar to how we've done it before. So now when I turn off the surface box, you can see the way that, especially in plan, certain orientations have deeper shading devices than others. And as I go and vary the degree to which I multiply these numbers that are being fed from the angle command, the more I can attain a kind of contrast from orientation to orientation. And then I'll also point out that all of this is going to update in a live fashion if we change the curvature that we started with. So in the Rhino window, I selected the, the base curve that started this whole set of operations. And if I turn its points on and move those around, you can see the way that the panels vary their expression because of the dramatic way in which the orientation is changing. So we'll stop with that for right now, and then in the, the next uh, segment, go over a couple other options for differentiating the facade.